So can you still create good works with student grade watercolor sets like this? You would have likely have heard this. Professional grade watercolor pigment should be absolutely used if you are serious about using the medium. In this video, I will be reviewing the Windsor & Newton Cotman Watercolor Student Grade Field Pocket Set to see if I can create good results. The biggest difference between professional grade and student grade is the fact that the main pigment ingredients are substituted with similar pigment ingredients instead of the more expensive traditional ingredients for the professional grade. Or in some cases, there are a mix of multiple pigments to achieve the approximate color. That's why you see the word hue in some of the pigments in the Windsor and Newton Cotman student grade lineup. Professional grade ones are regarded as the best with more vibrancy and intensity. The professional grade has a higher pigment to binder ratio, meaning even if the ingredients might be the same, the student grade pigment potency is less and duller. You will therefore need to apply a lot more if you want to match the intensity of the professional grade. This is one of the factors why student grade costs less. I used some Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor pigments when I started practicing watercolor back in the 1990s. So I've recently bought a Winsor & Newton Cotman field watercolor set just to review and recommend to students if the Cotman series is as good as I remembered, costing only about $30, about half the price what I remembered it to be. This is the field box set, complete with 12 pigments, a small number two brush, a 35 milliliter water container, a small synthetic sponge, fold out mixing surfaces, and the cap that would act as a water reservoir for cleaning and picking up water. Now, I have been eyeing this particular set like some 12 years ago. However, I had lost interest when I considered assembling my own set with a small empty pocket metal palette. Now, there are many video reviews of this particular set with color swatching of the included pigments, and I shall not be discussing them anymore. What I'm interested to show you is if the student grade watercolor any usable for a veteran watercolors like me. So over the last three weeks, I have been using the Cotman set. I have painted on a 16 by 24 centimeters hot press 100% cotton watercolor paper, particularly the Bao Hong watercolor sketchbook. I painted the Batman, Boba Fett, two different ones, an outdoor on-location sketch in Manila, and a character from the Jibaru episode of Netflix, Love Robots Death Season 3. The Batman painting is a good test mixing for the darker tones of the browns and the blues to see if the results will be muddier or less vibrant. As a challenge with the Batman painting, I only used the included number two small brush and had used the water limit of the included water container. So by using a number two brush, uh, it was slower than I'm used to because I have to ferry pigments or water uh, more times onto the painting. For the rest of the other painting tests, I used my favorite Escoda travel brushes. So a uh, number four, a number eight, and a 12. For the painting of the Star Wars character, Boba Fett, the range of pigments used were more, ranging from yellows, reds, blues, and browns. As a comparison, I have painted the same reference with my current Daniel Smith set before, using similar pigments from the Cotman set to execute the second painting. Using the Cotman set outdoors to sketch on location, I noticed again that the pigmentation uh, was not as vibrant than the professional grade ones. And finally, using the Cotman set to create the painting of the woman character from Love, Robot Death Season 3's Jibaro episode, I found creating the face using lighter pigments of lemon yellow hue, cerulean blue hue, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson hue made a vibrant result. However, the headgear did not have a vibrant result. I realized that the burnt umber that I was using with the ultramarine 
to achieve darker tones was rated as opaque. The burnt umber of professional grade is actually rated as transparent. Usually you get less muddy or cleaner color mixes when using two transparent pigments. When I say muddy, the dried painting result has this veil of chalkiness on top of the uh, painted area. I was using the uh, burnt umber freely in the four painting examples, mainly to darken, modify other colors. So the major thing to remember in using this set to avoid muddier mixes by not mixing opaque pigments like burnt umber to modify or darken your pigments. You can still create wonderful dark grays by mixing alizarin crimson hue and viridian hue or ultramarine and burnt sienna, all of which are transparent. Surprisingly, 9 out of the 12 colors provided in the set are transparent. The colors that were opaque were Chinese white, cerulean blue hue, and burnt umber. As individual pigments, especially the ones with higher chroma, they look luminous. I have compared some of the Windsor and Newton professional grade ones I have with me. Now the pro grade ones have more intensity if the consistency of the applied pigment has less water ratio and seems to have a wider range of value when trying to create graded washes. So there is less effort in applying rich or intense color results with the pro-grade pigments. I even found that the usual granulating pigments like burnt sienna and ultramarine are less or not granulating at all. This is likely due to the substituted pigments like instead of using traditional minerals. Granulation is the result of sedimentary textures when mineral-based pigments are applied on rougher paper. These are more apparent in the cold press or rough texture paper surfaces as opposed to the hot press or smooth surfaces. So what's my conclusion? If you are a student or a beginner in trying out watercolor for the first time, get this set or just even the other variants of the Cotman series. The included 12 pigments are mostly transparent and can produce good color variants and can help produce consistent value control with correct techniques. It has all the primary colors with warm and cooler variants, secondary colors that are useful, and a dark gray that is transparent, which is Payne's gray at only around 30 to 40% of the cost of a pro grade and folds into a small form factor for easy carry or part of your daily bag and even fits into most pockets. I see this as a great encouragement to paint wherever and whenever you feel like painting watercolors. My advice to modify this to be better is to carry a, a bigger brush. Um, I, I suggest a number eight or to number 10. Replace the white pigment with a different pigment. Add two more half pans since there is space. Like I added in permanent rose and viridian hue and an extra ultramarine half pan since uh, I use it a lot for my mixes. The thing that I wish they had included in this design is a secondary water basin as you can use the first to clean your brush and the other for picking up cleaner water. And of course, the included small brush is pretty useless for bigger size paintings. However, it can be very useful for detailing. So what do you think about this watercolor kit from Windsor Newton? Please press the uh, like button if this video has given you value and subscribe for future reviews and demonstrations. Thank you.